Hi everyone, uh, it's Monday, April 24th, and I know I got all the dates wrong last week. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Please forgive me. Um, I'll try to get them right from here on out. Uh, today is Monday, April uh, 24th. Uh, it's great to be with you. We continue uh, our study of, of the, uh, we call it the river, it's a study of the first 15 chapters of Acts, but the springboard was that uh, Ezekiel 47, uh, uh, and uh, this vision that uh, Ezekiel had of this whole time in which we live, that we call it the end times, the Bible does, between the first and second coming of Jesus, uh, and and how the, the water in his vision is seeping under the temple and then getting big, larger, the river's getting larger and larger and larger. Wherever it goes, it brings life. Jesus is the water of life. Uh, he begins seeping uh, from the temple, which is his body, destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up. Huh? Uh, and and so it, it just is continuing now. And uh, last week, at the beginning of Acts, we the very first verse has said everything that he that Luke had written in the Gospel of Luke, the the, the birth, uh, the ministry, the death, the resurrection of Jesus. That was the beginning uh, of Jesus' uh, work, right? The beginning of his mission. He's continuing it now through us, through his people. That's the beginning of the story of Acts. And so what we're trying to do here is go through these first 15 chapters and apply them to our lives. So, kind of like uh, we looked at Easter Sunday. We said, hey, this event, this the tomb is empty. Jesus is risen from the dead. And we tend to make that a set piece and say, okay, well, let's go on to the next thing then. We, we know it here. But the, the goal or, or the challenge or the power that Jesus would give us is to live that out, make it a living reality in our lives that, that the risen Christ is with us, right? And the same thing uh, as, as we're looking at this ongoing mission of Jesus, the idea is to make his mission our mission huh? uh, and, and what that means in our lives. And so we, we put this little book, booklet together, which basically it just has us read through Acts. I know the first few days uh, we'll add uh, uh, the text from other parts of the Bible that are just to give us context, right? Uh, but, but this is really focusing on Acts. Uh, and we've given you an introduction and we've given you some, some just ideas uh, to, as, as you're reading it. Uh, uh, three sets of open questions, if you will. The first one is just, hey, what has God shown me here? And what am I going to do about it? That's pretty basic stuff. What has God shown me here? What am I going to do about it? What, what's hitting me here? What am I going to do about it? However you want to say that. Uh, I, I call that the one-two punch. And then we did a thing called Junk Joy Jesus. And basically, uh, you know, life is broken. It's full of junk. And, and we'll see that in the readings. We'll see that in our lives. It, where, where does it reflect that as we read? Uh, the joy is, is how God brings his reality into our lives and, and how is Jesus here. Huh? So that's junk joy in Jesus. And the last one, I, I think I call it the, the, the mission here. Yeah, I call it the mission. And, and we've talked about this a lot. Jesus, when he walked his earth, he shared life, created friendships, inspired hope. That's, that's how we can describe his ministry. Uh, and so we look through the same things at St. Matthew. And so as we're reading the book of Acts, it makes sense that if this is the ongoing ministry of Jesus, we should see uh, he and his followers sharing life, creating friendships, uh, relationships, right? Inspiring hope, uh, bringing the certainty that today can be better than tomorrow, stretching out into eternity uh, as, as the love of Jesus touches their lives. So as we're reading it, a, a third set of open questions is, where do I see the people of Jesus sharing life, creating friendships, and inspiring hope. And what does that mean in my life right now? So, so just uh, if you haven't picked up one of the booklets, uh, I would invite you to do so. Uh, also, they're online for us. Uh, the introduction, and then each day we'll we'll have the the, the new readings. Uh, so this series, uh, the the Sundays, the messages, and, and what I do during the week um, is really to give you some background context as you're doing these readings. Uh, and kind of asking yourself those open questions and see where God leads you. Okay, so that's that's our focus uh, in in this series. So I thought we would go through uh, this this. Uh, pa Pastor Nathan already gave us a foundation, right? But but go through this Acts chapter two. It's is so pivotal. Uh, it's the day of Pentecost. Pentecost, of course, came. 50 days after Jesus arose from the dead, 40 days after he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven. He says, but wait till I send you the gift from my father, right? The, the spirit that Jesus promised. Uh, and, and that's what happens on this day. And, and we'll see what it's all about. Okay, so we'll read the first part here. It says, uh, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And, and we know from the previous verses that 
that they gathered together and they prayed, right? And this was not just the, the 12. This was the 120, the, the numbers of believers who were in Jerusalem at that time, right? Uh, and, and so they, they, they gathered together in one place. I would say they're probably praying, right? And so, so maybe, you know, what's God saying to me? What am I going to do about it? Maybe, oh, they, they, they were praying. Okay, maybe I ought to be praying about how God is guiding me in his ongoing mission and ministry, right? And that his power would come upon me and all those things. Prayer is a good place to start, huh? So uh, so one day when they were all together in one place, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven, filled the whole house where they were sitting. Uh, and, and so you immediately get the idea of power, right? Something's happening here. There's the, the power of God is... is um, is coming upon them. And that same power as we'll see is for us, the spirit that's poured out. Uh, it, it's not a one-time event it's a, that, that has no meaning for it. It's a one-time event that continues. Okay? So, uh, I'm sorry. It continues. Uh, so it filled the whole house where they were sitting. No, nothing could contain it. The house could, right? It, it, they, then what they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And so, so you have this fire. Uh, I, I always think of, a, I grew up in Southern California, so you had these, these crazy chaparral fires, right, during the, during the Santa Ana winds. So you had a spark and then the wind would take it. It would just blow, man. It would be terrible. Uh, and, and these, these Manzanita bushes, they were made to burn, right? This, uh, and, and, and so you had these, these crazy fires. And, and I think, that's kind of, you got this, this great power of God in the wind, then you have this fire. What does the wind do with fire? It, it blows it. it. It makes it huge. Uh, and, and so the, the mission of Jesus Christ is like this great wildfire uh, that we take in all the world. Isn't that cool stuff? Uh, and, and so uh, that, that, I think, is, is the vision here. And notice the little word all. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. So this wasn't just a few, and I think we'll see this a little later uh, as we go through this week, but you know, in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God would come upon the kings and the priests uh, and, and the prophets, right? Uh, and and um, just one by one for a mission that God had them do, right? Uh, and the judges in the Old Testament, whatever it might be. Um, but now, and, and it, it foretold the time when the Spirit of God would pour out on all of his people, this is that time. Every single one, male and female, and as we'll see in another reading, right? Children and 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 uh, adults uh, and and so forth. So, uh, so and it says they were, it began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Um, so so uh, the way this is described here, as we'll see, is that they were speaking in languages they had never learned, like. Uh, like if I were to go to France and be able to speak um, French when I've never studied French, right? That's that's what, how they described the, the gift here. Now, they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. Uh, why? Because of this was a big festival. Pentecost just didn't, the day of Pentecost, as we remember in Christian circles, it didn't just start on Pentecost. It was, it was part of this festival of, of the Jewish faith, right? And so, so there were Jews from all over the then known world who would make their pilgrimage to Jerusalem during this time, which think about what all this means, all right? They, they are able to speak all these languages, so they're in their native tongues, they know these languages, and these people from all over the world were there uh, who had a background of the true God, the Old Testament God, right? Uh, and, and now would know Jesus and, and take his truth then into all the world. It's really powerful stuff. Um, uh, when they heard this sound, a crowd uh, together came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language, right? Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Ga uh, Asia, uh, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much to drink. So, uh, and, and again, the, 
it says they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them, right? So they began to speak in other languages, the Spirit enabled them. Uh, and, and the people heard the good news in their own, in their own tongue. And they, they were saying, okay, this is a great question. What, what does this mean? And, and I want you to ask yourself that. All right, I've, I've kind of thrown some things out. Uh, and, and, uh, but you ask yourself, what, what does this mean? And what does it mean in my life right now? Now, there were some folks that, ma that made fun of this. There's always going to be um, those who, who want to, who they're fright they, they want to turn their back on the truth because they want to be their own gods, right? Small g. Uh, and, and, and you're always going to have that, uh, even when the evidence is, is right in front of them, even when the truth is staring them in the face. Uh, but God doesn't turn his back on them, and, and we should neither. We continue to love them in Jesus' name and give this witness. So uh, use those open questions. See what this means to you. Uh, let, let, let's pray. Dearest Jesus, we thank you um, that your heart is as big as the whole world, that you came and you suffered and died for the forgiveness of the sins of all people, for you, for your Father so loved the world that he gave. You would have all people to be saved. Lord, show us what this means in our lives as we join you on your ongoing mission. We pray in your name. Amen. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. May God be with you. Bye-bye.